So what we do have here is we have two machines running. So we have the 320 uh, next gen excavator in Tucson, in Tanai Hills. Okay. And then we have the 926, which is operating in Clayton. Okay. So small wheel loader, excavator, medium excavator. Okay. So the station itself, so you have um, the, what we call a site camera. This is what a, a site can do. They can set this up just to give you a bigger perspective of what's on site. Okay. And then you have the cameras that's on the machines. Okay. This is real time. There's a very slight delay in this. This one, the side camera. We have the front camera, and you have the left, right camera, and the rear camera as well. Okay. The screen that you can see here, I'll just move this slide, John. This is exactly what you see if you're in the machine. You can set all of the controls on the machine from this touch screen. Uh, start it, stop it, switch the lights on, switch the lights off, set your E fences, set your grade, everything. Now you switch to the, uh, the D6. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Click on that. And you should switch over. So now we're in Peoria. And I'll switch the camera now. The side camera. So this is Peoria Edwards. Okay. Our facility there. So you saw how fast the connection was. Now John beeps it and then he, he uh, controls the machine. But another factor about this machine as well, he actually has a grade as well. Okay, a grade system on the machine. Again, it can control all of this from the station. So John can move the machine now uh, when, he, when he connects up, um, set the grade, and the way the way it goes. But you saw how fast the connection was. Very, very fast. You can actually have up around about five machines on this station. So you, could, if you have five machines around the world, you can connect to all five machines. So Jeff can do the same. But what we're doing is we're sharing some machines at the moment. But in the demos that we'll show you, spotlight demos uh, later this week, um, you'll see the 930 being operated and also the D6XC from here. Okay, and be on the big jump charts. Have you tried this technology in very remote locations? Yes. I'm thinking of Brazil, in the yes. area of the jungle. So there is an infrastructure that you didn't put in. Okay, because this is all driven by Wi Fi. This is what we call a non line of sight system. So you physically don't see the machine. The console system is what we call a line of sight. So you can actually physically see the machine. Okay? But the, the non line of sight system, the command station needs an infrastructure. Do you, you rely or you depend on the phone companies in your countries yes. for this to work? Yeah. The better the phone company, obviously, the, the, better, the, the better it's going to work. Yes. So, what, what we're doing actually is Caterpillar, we're looking at different companies to see you know, who would. You know, give a good service, and then we will give them recommendations. But then it's for that you know telecom company or you know, integrator that will come out and do that. They will do a site assessment, see what was necessary to get the signals to where you need it to be, and then they will come in and install. But as you can see, it's uh, very very easy to use. The latency that you have by moving the control to something happening, it's real time. It's about 150 milliseconds, which is nothing. It's a very simple uh, system. The benefits, and you know, at the moment we are focusing on uh, niche markets. So, you know, if customers have any unsafe uh, areas that they're working in, you know, an ideal situation is to get the operator out of the machine. So, you know, we, we are getting a lot of interest in those areas. Um, also, on barges, we have to unload barges. Uh, we can put a machine in there, so a small wheel loader. And he's uh, working with some customers now. Uh, where we put the small wheel loader in there and pushing the pile, and then you've got a big grab from over, you know, to take the material out. And the grab is actually going over the top of the machines, you know, which is unsafe. So get the, get the people out and make it more safe. There is also um, uptime um, benefits that we get. So you saw how fast it was to switch from one machine to another. So, you know, you keep your uptime, keep the production going, increase productivity, uh, and also uh, insurances. You know, customers have to insure, you know, their workforce in the machines. And if there is a high risk area, then the insurance is high. So if they can get the, the people out of the machines, their insurances could be dropped.
Longer term, where do you see the um, broader adoption of this type of technology? Yeah, the, what we're looking at, you know, this is this, what we can pass as a stepping stone towards autonomy. Um, the machines themselves have to have electrohydraulics on the machines to be able to operate by RC. And then we do have semi-autonomous uh, functions on, on, for instance, the compactors where the actual operator will set, um, for instance, a square, he sets up go and it'll do it automatically, it'll steer automatically, so we class it as semi-autonomous. Then the future will be you know, moving into a complete autonomy uh, on site. Today we have uh, the mining machines running autonomously, the hauling units. We've, we've moved over 1.8 billion tons of material autonomously. Um, you know, so we're learning a lot from the mining sector, you know, from our, our mining partners in Pink Cat. Do you see where that, that that's more of a fit for this type of technology, the high production, high volume applications? No, so if we take this batch plant example here that Jeff's running, if we're on a low volume batch plant where the machine's not being fully utilized, let's say we've got 50% uptime, we could more have one operator switching between two machines to have maximum uptime across two different plants. So the opportunities for this technology across multiple applications are are quite fantastic. We're learning new applications in technology on a daily basis. I'm just curious about the construction job site though because there's so much variety of applications, so much, uh, so many machines operating on a site. Um, do you see this as a practical solution there at any point? I think we have to look at what our customers' two main issues are. So we're, we're solving our customers' issues with the technology we're developing. <coughs> currently and uh, the two biggest issues are getting maintenance and tax and getting operators and with our CBA agreements and technician training programs we have the best and the most amount of technicians uh, and wrapping that up in a service value agreement to take that headache away from the customer and the next is operators so we're attracting a different type of operator with this command system. The younger generation don't seem to be wanting to be getting into the machines on site you know the vibration the noise you know but if you introduce something like this to the younger generation they're very very interesting so we have we have command for hauling so the, the mining machines the hauling the big hauling machines you know so we have command for hauling we have command for dozing we have command for excavation so we, we switch now to the excavator and we have command for loading so we're, we're covering all aspects of the job site okay so, but this this technology now we're moving into the construction industries instead of the mining sectors so our focus i mean we have tractors for the mining sectors but now we're moving into the construction industries with more of these products now this the, the small wheel loaders will be available fourth quarter uh, this year and then we'll have the excavators coming uh, early 2021 along with the small tractors as well if you pull that person out of that fatigue environment put them into an environment like this you can work all day long go home at night still feeling fresh, so it's, it's, a, it's a very good system. What about the feel through the controls? Do you get the actual feel of operating no, there's, machines? No, there's no feedback system on, on, on the stations. In the past we did try that. We, we did try to move the seat along with the machine, but as you're looking at a screen that's not moving and the seat's moving, you actually got seasick. But again, you're trying to remove that vibration, that movement from the operator. Sound is very important. You can hear the sound on this machine. You know, especially on the tractor, you like to hear what the engine is doing. And one of the tests that we do, or when we're training, we ask the operators to lower the blade and until you see the front of the machine start to lift. It's quite strange watching them because they lower the blade and then when the blade starts to lift from the machine, they start to listen to the chair. They start to lean back. So they can, you know, it's your, it's your, your sound and your sight vision, you know, that, that really pulls that in, into your brain and you actually feel it. These make great training tools as well, we found out, because you put somebody in a, a machine, a lot of these smaller machines only have uh, one seat, right? So most of your bigger ones where you can have a buddy seat. So it makes it great for some, a new operator, especially like myself. That's what I do is train a lot of operators on these and have 
I've discovered that it, it's a lot faster to train somebody up opposed to getting on and off the machine. You can do it here on the fly, even just show them and talk to them about what you're doing while you're sitting in the station. A guy that is in a wheelchair or something and disabled people, thank you, that were, now they can still work, right? Not get on and off the machine. With these machines now with electro hydraulics, we build in the, in the, in the actual uh, modulation. So if you move a joystick slightly, the implements or whatever you're going to control those slowly. So it's it's a one to one, and that's how we get that across. And so the the, the electronics, le the electro hydraulics on the machines, are finely tuned to the actual stations and the, and the controls on the station. I mean, this is in the future. Right? We see a lot of buttons on here um, to be able to like, actually add it into right, so the control. Yeah. We have a uh, light sequence. We have blue, um, green, and red. So, for instance, if I hit this now, we got a machine out there operating. With Controls. Blue will go solid, and then the red light will come on. Yeah. If there's a guy actually in the machine, because there's a switch that we can switch between manual and RC, if it's in manual mode, this person in the machine is green. If the guy gets out of the machine and switches into RC mode, he'll go through a sequence and then go solid blue. This is to tell people around that. The machine is in RC mode now. It's not connected to, but be very careful on the machine. You could wake up at any time. Yes, exactly. And then we have to go through a beep in sequence. So when you switch it to the RC mode and the, and the station connects, it will sound the horn. So then you have to actually go through a horn sequence. So you would press the horn, keep it pressed, and then the horn would stop automatically. You release the horn, and then it would beep two more times. And that's you put it into RC mode, and the blue light will start flashing. And anybody around it as well. The lights will flash as well. Okay. So it's giving you a visual and a sound. So, for instance, if you have quite a few machines working on the site, remote control, the site supervisor could be walking around with this. If he sees anything or you know, toward, or something's not going quite right, he hits the red button. All the RC machines will stop. All of them. Immediately. And then you can reset it from here as well, and the guys then connect, connect again. When your dealer services your cat, they know it's about keeping a lot more than a machine working. Let's do the work.